Welcome to the Investing Podcast, presented by Tusk Media. Now, for your early morning look at financial news and activity in audio and video form, here's the Morning Market Mimosa. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Investing Podcast, presented by Tusk Media. This is the Morning Market Mimosa. Today is Wednesday, June 1st, 2016. Brand new month in the market, which means we're going to have a little bit of fun, do some stuff that's a little bit different during this pre-market video, make some predictions, make some uneducated guesses, so to speak, and kind of use that as a framework for a discussion on what we're seeing in futures, some leaders and some laggers in pre-market trading for the day. With that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into a game that I like to call over-under. If you're a gambler, you know what this means. If you bet on sports games, you look at the total number of points. The biggest prognosticators expect to be scored, and you bet on will there be more or will there be fewer in this contest. We're going to do exactly that, but we're going to look at the markets and the price of oil, and we're going to use the framework of what we saw at the close of business yesterday, so the May 31st market closes, with the exception of oil, and we'll talk a little bit about that individually. But as we look at the major U.S. equity indices yesterday, the Dow closed at 17,787 and some change, the S&P 500 was just shy of 2,097. The NASDAQ was at 4,948, a little bit more than that. Oil, meanwhile, has been hovering right around the $50 per barrel mark. We've kind of been keeping an eye on that. That's been something we've been looking for really for a while. We've seen oil get as low as the $30 range. For the last 18 months, it hadn't really been up to this level. So now it's up there. We're really excited about it being there. It's obviously helped out. Oil stocks, the energy sector as a whole, and the market. And that's part of why we had a positive market month in the month of May. This month, I anticipate for the month of June, not necessarily a runaway market, but I do expect that by and large, the market as a whole is going to yield a positive return. But I think the other thing that we need to keep an eye out on is something that we saw yesterday, and we talked about this at length in the Investing Happy Hour video on 531 2016. I do think we're going to see some dispersion among the major benchmarks in the U.S. equity market. So last month, the NASDAQ really led the way. It was up more than 3%. Contrast that with the Dow, which was technically down for the month. You saw some good dispersion. We've also seen that year-to-date. Again, if you check out the Investing Happy Hour video from May 31st or the podcast from May 31st, we talked about that on a monthly basis and a year-to-date basis. That trend, I expect, will continue. And because the NASDAQ had such a strong month of May, It seems like if we're expecting a little bit of a gain in the month of June, you might actually see that kind of come back down to normal. Some reversion to the mean may be in order. So I think the NASDAQ may be down a little bit or at least closer to flat for the month. The S&P 500 and the Dow, meanwhile, I think will be up a little bit. Now, it's important to note here that we are not making a prediction here other than just for the sake of entertainment value and having some fun and giving us something to talk about. So don't go home. Don't place bets on this. Don't bet on anything, but especially not on one of our over-unders. Again, we highly recommend identifying individual investment opportunities, individual stocks that are undervalued, and taking a look at the market as a whole through the lens of those individual opportunities. That's what we do here at Narwhal Capital Management. So we're not necessarily predicting this as something that we're going to act on within portfolios. We're just trying to have a little fun with it. Oil, I think, is going to get up above that $50 threshold and I think it's going to stay there. I'm not going to put a price target on it because even if you start to say about talk about a three or four dollar move all of a sudden you're talking about a six to eight percent bump and I think that would be a little bit strong. We've seen oil climb for four consecutive months. It was up seven percent in the month of May but to expect it to continue to rise at that rate might be a little bit bold but I do think oil goes up and I think that continues to drive the energy sector and the markets north just a little bit. Again we're not putting a predictor number here. But as we look at this, I've already contradicted myself because market futures are down as we open up on June 1st. Everything's down about a third of 1%, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the S&P. As we saw yesterday, futures certainly don't necessarily guarantee what's going to happen during the day, but sometimes they do set the tone. One company that is setting that negative tone, so to speak, is Under Armour. So the athletic apparel company basically came out yesterday and revised their total full year sales number. They revised it down from $5 billion with a B to $4.93 billion. Now, that's not a huge swing numerically speaking, but Under Armour is not a company that's usually valued based purely on numbers. So they've got a lot of intangibles, things like great athletes, whether it's 
Seth Curry, Jordan Spieth, Bryce Harper, Michael Phelps, they've got Cam Newton. They've got a lot of guys kind of in their corner that give the brand a lot of appeal, makes it really popular, implies a really strong growth trajectory. They've also got a number of universities and major sports programs that use their apparel both for the utility of it as well as to sell their own apparel. There's kind of a niche uh, cult following to Under Armour supplies and things like that. So when you see that kind of growth, you look at those things and for them to come out and say, hey, it's going to be a little bit lower, all of a sudden that number, even though it's a relatively small revision, means a lot. So the stock's down about 3%. On the other side of things, you do have Michael Kors, the luxury retailer, is up north of 9% today on an earnings per share beat in their latest earnings announcement. They also announced that they're buying back some shares. So you've got both ends of the spectrum. You've got a daily look at the market there and you've got a month long prediction. Let us know what you're thinking. Leave us a five star review on iTunes. Tell us what your prediction on the over-unders are. We'll tally those up. Maybe we'll get a little poll going on Twitter. Follow us at Tusk Media LLC. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Spreaker. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that little subscribe button. Follow our blog, all that good stuff. Share us with your friends. We'll check back in a little bit with the Stock Market Power Lunch, and we'll be back at the end of the day with the Investing Happy Hour. Tusk Media is a subsidiary of Narwhal Capital Management. Ratings and reviews of Tusk Media content are not to be construed as endorsements of opinions, analysis, or services offered by Tusk or its parent company. The opinions and predictions shared here are our professional beliefs at the time of publication. We are not under duress from any of the corporate entities mentioned. This is not a solicitation to take any particular action. Although we are investment advisors, this information should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. We strive to be as impartial, insightful, and accurate as possible. We base our opinions, analysis, and calculations on information we believe to be reliable, but we cannot guarantee its accuracy. We can, however, guarantee that our opinions will sometimes be flat out wrong due to a variety of factors. Employees and clients of Narwhal Capital Management may or may not hold positions in the securities detailed and may or may not hold these positions in the future. A full list of all securities purchased, sold, or held during the 12 months preceding the date of this publication can be provided upon request. Unless otherwise noted, all data accessed via MarketWatch or the Bloomberg Terminal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. A copy of Narwhal's form ADV is available at the SEC's website, www.advisorinfo.sec.gov, or from Narwhal upon written request.